He's must be having trouble. Well, they're all for that. Starts with the news. They're all out. They're all out. I'd like to call the 24th regular meeting of the 2020 21 Common Council to order. Will the clerk please call the roll? Alderperson Bourne? Here. Alderperson Donahue? Here. Alderperson Feldy? Here. Alderperson Ackley? Here. Alderperson Phillips? Here. Alderperson Decker? Here. Alderperson Sorensen? Here. Alderperson Silvaglio? Present. Alderperson Felicki Paneski? Here. Alderperson Mitchell? Here. There are 10 present. Thank you. Would the clerk then please read the quote for the day? Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Some succeed because they are destined to, but most su succeed because they are determined to. Thank you very much. Next, please stand and join me in the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Next item on the agenda is approval of the minutes from our 23rd regular council meeting, which was held on March 1st. Alderperson Sorensen. Thank you, Mayor. I move to approve the minutes from our previous meeting. Thank you for that motion and support. Those minutes are before us. Is there any discussion? Seeing none, all those in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Motion passes. And then we'll move on to a public forum. There is no one this evening. Very good. Our next item on the agenda then is a presentation uh, by Administrator Todd Wolf uh, about our community survey results. Good evening. All right, so we're gonna start with our community survey for the 2020. Uh, the, obviously the goal here, next slide. Uh, the goal here in our annual survey is to gain an understanding and the views of the uh, preferences of residents. Um, this effort supports our city's 2017 through 2021 strategic plan focus um, and area of communication. Uh, the survey was administered online via Google Forms. No paper responses this, uh, at this time or shared public computers uh, due to the pandemic. Next. So as you can see, the future years of questions, content within the community survey will work uh, in tandem with the, up, with the update of the strategic plan. As this was to be the last year of our strategic plan, this, this is supposed to be uh, the last year, but we will be extending our original 2017 to 21. This is to allow the strategic planning uh, for vendor support to allow for a 2021 to aid in internal development that we're doing within the city. Next. Of the, th of the 39,256 residents ages 18 and older, the participation rate was, um, was 1,540 or 3.9%. We need to focus on additional means to communicate to our citizens lack of, um, lack of contact is a, is a lack of true detail and wants from our constituents. So as you can see, assuming randomness of, of responses and result projected at 95%, uh, certain with a plus or minus 3% margin of error. Next. Here we basically have uh, how we rated it for questions that were zero to 10 scale, excellent, 10, nine or eight, good, seven, six, fair, five, four, three, and then poor, which we don't wanna talk about is a two, one, or zero. Next.
As I stated before, the history and the number of responses from 2016 from 680 of our constituents' involvement to 2021 of 1540 uh, is, a, is a start, but we have a lot of work to do. The concern that I have with this is that this could be the same group year over year. Although 6% increase uh, approximately, we do need to have a broader citizen involvement You'll see why in just a few minutes. Next. So a promotion of the survey, the city um, and departmental websites and related social media outlets, the city hall, um, city hall atrium display monitor, city electronic message signs, again, difficult during a pandemic. Our cable channel, WSCS, uh, for those that view through our, our station, our shoreline metro buses and transfer station monitor uh, for those that use our transit system. Community partners and agencies, our city staff members, and our newsletter and subscription list. Again, these are just a scratch of communication in the community and we need to improve on. We need more contact points. COVID doesn't help as well as a large population does not use these resources. So these are areas that we need to focus on as a, as a as a council. We need direct contact with our citizens, not just a website. Next. I do wanna thank you. And thanks to all for promoting this communication because obviously with the communication that we did present, we did see an, inc an improvement. So thank you to all. Next. Our, our survey per uh, participant demographics uh, really shows the city of Sheboygan and how, how the interaction is. I really would like to see in the future more interaction on the first three categories versus the ages 56 to 65, although they do add a lot to the value of the city and the community. Again, this shows how we need to better, um, better citizen interaction and participation. And you'll see why in just a second. Next. Again, survey participant demographics. Again, uh, the majority of the group was white, white Caucasian. Um, there's quite a bit of areas within our community that are, are growing that we need additional participation. And again, this is where we need to all reach out and have more boots on the ground when it comes to communication and maybe in different formats. Next. When I touched earlier, on the participant participation, you can also see that the survey of participant demographics kind of ref references uh, two slides prior. So when we talk about the group and, and the longevity of our, of our um, citizens, 25 plus years seems to be the majority of that, which falls what I would say into the, into the grouping of the um, 56 to 65 age category. We really need to find out more from those less than two years, two to five and six to 10. That's the demographic that we really need to focus on. We need to hear more from our newer Sheboyganites. What are we doing right? What do we need to improve? And why you moved here? Besides it being the greatest place on earth, right? So then we can improve once we have that information. Next. So quality of life. Again, 82% of the survey participants indicated the quality of life was excellent to good. And that's great, but we really need to focus on why do we still have 15.3% in fair, 2.2 in poor, and 0.5% in no response. We're doing great things, but we need to hear from more people in more areas. Next. City's general direction, again, 79.7 percent of the survey participants indicated the city's general direction was improving and steady. That's great from a, from a high level. The concern that I have is that some of, some of the participant demographics didn't, didn't like the change that, ha that has happened, in my opinion. Some in that area don't like change, period. Need to hear from those that are using the amenities. Again, those younger generation, the people that have lived here, you know, less than 10 years. Next. Overall performance. Again, 76% of respondents indicated overall performance of the city as excellent and good. 
which is great. Great job for city staff and team. Again, please remember the majority of the group that um, took the survey are the 56 to 65. We really need to hear from our, our, our younger Sheboyganites to the community. Next. Priorities and effectiveness, focusing on priorities. You can see that 25.6% uh, is excellent and 33.4% is, is good. But we still need to focus on the fair and poor because that's where we, we can improve our community. Because if we can focus on our fair and our poor, there's 40% right there. Delivering services efficiently, again, 41.6, excellent, 31.2% good. But if we can pull in another 25, 26% just by focusing on our fair to poor, what are we doing that's not hitting the, the high marks? Next. Informing and, and managing, keeping our residents informed. Again, how do we communicate? How do we communicate to all of our, all of our, um, all of our con constituents and how do we communicate even better? So keeping residents informed, again, 37.2 and 30.8. So they're basically saying we do it, we're doing a great job, but then there's 20, 30% if you take the uh, fair to poor and you combine those, that's a, that's a large population that's not looking at how we communicate very well. Managing taxpayers' money, again, 27.8, excellent, 34%, good. But again, 28.9 and 6.9 .6 is fair and poor. So again, lots of room for improvement. Next. Community survey service levels ranked as excellent and good. So zoning land use, 54.5, all the way through our city, our overall city administration, 67.9. Even our transit services is 67.7. So people like what we're doing, but we're still missing a little bit yet. Next. Service levels ranked as excellent and good. Community, community events, street maintenance, recycling garbage. And just, we have to remember that we have the new cart system that has been a hit. I know that was a controversy for quite a few years for all of us. Attracting business, 62%. Again, lots of room for improvement there. Only complaint, seagulls are hungry. Look for this, looking at the city, it's much, much better, much cleaner. Next. So department ratings, and we'll go through these. As you can see, they're in alphabetical order. And you can see the assessors, building, uh, building inspection, city administrator's office, um, all the way down to uh, Common Council. Next. Finance, Fire Department, Mayor's Office, down to uh, Planning and Development. Next. Police Department, Public Works, Senior Services, Shoreline Metro, and Water Utility. So out of those three slides, Fire Department for 2021 was number one at 8.57. Uh, the Library was number two at 8.08. Police was number three at 7.85. The water utility was number four at 7.74. And public works was at 7.48. Unfortunately, city administrator was not rated. Next. <laughs> so when we talk about our top five sources of city information, again, we get excited about our website, social media, the Sheboygan Sun. We talk about the Sheboygan Press. The Sheboygan Insider Newsletter and WHBL. Those are our top five. We as a community need to continue to in extend our technology to our, our constituents. There's a lot more ways to communicate. Um, and the, you can see these top five in the demographics that we showed earlier. Next. So the community has told us our, four, our foremost frequently mentioned critical uh, uh, project initiatives. I think number one uh, that I've, I've talked about with you is our number one uh, failure, and that's our street repairs. Again, budget constraints, right? Affordable housing comes up quite often. 
We need to better understand that and what it means. Business development. Again, we're in a COVID situation, but business is developing. Things are happening. It's just taking a little bit longer. Diversity, equity, and inclusion. I think that's all communities' goal to improve that and include it and make everything a much better community for all. Next. Our Chamber Cash winner, so we have to say congratulations to Amy and her daughter, Finley. It's so great to actually see the families that are behind the people that take our, our actual our surveys. Next. So according to Amy, my husband and I both grew up in Sheboygan, but we moved away during our college years. It happens so often, right? As soon as we started our family, we knew we wanted to move back to Sheboygan. It's such a wonderful place to raise a family. How many times do we hear that from everybody that comes to Sheboygan? Our number one thing is a great place to live, work, and play and raise a family. And we have so much to be proud of. Next. I just wanted to say thank you for everybody's um, participation in this. And I hope that next year we'll be able to do even better with our community survey. Thank you. Next is mayor's announcements. Uh, the city continues to try to help uh, people that are in distress during COVID. We have a small business emergency assistance program. The city continues to accept applications for the small business emergency assistance program to help our local businesses stay in business. Applications are accepted on a first come first serve basis. For more information, they can uh, contact the uh, Sheboygan uh, Planning Department. We also have a mortgage and utility assistance program. Sheboygan and, this, and, this, and Lakeshore Community Action Program are offering a mortgage and utility assistance program for the city of Sheboygan homeowners who have been negatively affected by COVID-19 pandemic. The mortgage assistance program will provide up to three months of mortgage assistance to eligible households within the city limits and <coughs> eligible household applicants must reside in the city limits own the home they reside in, have a current income of less than 80% of the county median income, and not be eligible for mortgage forbearance uh, and facing foreclosure. The pre-screen application is uh, available at www.lakeshorecap.org and questions can be directed to Lakeshore Cap at 920-682-3737. Uh, there's a spring election candidate forum coming up. The Sheboygan branch of American Association of Youth University Women will sponsor a virtual candidate forum for the April election for the mayoral contest and the Aldermanic District 2 contest. The forum for mayoral candidates will air live at 6 p.m. on WSCS on Thursday, March 18th. Orion Sorensen is challenging incumbent, myself, Mike Vandersteen, and a forum for Aldermanic uh, District 2 candidates will immediately follow the mayoral forum. The candidates for the council seats are Roberta Felicki Paneski and John Ranieri. Our spring election is set for April 6th. The ballot for the spring election includes state and local offices. The state offices to be elected are the state superintendent of public instruction, a court of appeals judge, and a circuit court judge. Uh, local offices to be elected are mayor, alder persons, and districts one, two, three, five, seven, and nine, and uh, the Sheboygan Area School District uh, School Board members. In-person absentee voting, it will be available at the city clerk's office beginning on March 23rd through April 2nd on weekdays. Voting hours are from eight o'clock in the morning till 4.30 in the afternoon. And there'll be special hours on April 2nd, the last day from 10 a.m. to 5 p.m. Next, I'd like to give a, a COVID update. First of all, let's review the numbers for today. Our uh, total positive cases increased by 83 during the last week. That uh, is a total of 13,070. Active cases uh, went up slightly and they're uh, up seven and that's a total of 139. 
Recovered cases have increased by 76 to a total of 12,799. Uh, we only have uh, six uh, people hospitalized currently. That's down three from last week. And the death total has stayed at 132, no increase in that death total. And um, Sheboygan County COVID-19 activity level is high. We've had a dramatic decrease in our trajectory in the last two months. The current burden rate is at 157 per 100,000 persons. If this trajectory continues to shrink, our burden rate goes, if it goes under 100 per 100,000 persons, the Sheboygan County activity level will improve from high to medium. There are currently 16 registered vaccinators in Sheboygan County. They've all begun to receive their vaccine and are able to assist with vaccinations. The supply of vaccine from the state is currently less than expectations and preventing all sites from operating at full capacity. Uh, new and eligible COVID groups have just been announced. The eligible groups are frontline healthcare personnel, residents and staff in skilled nursing and long-term care facilities, police and fire and correctional staff, adults over 65, education and child care workers, individuals enrolled in Medicaid and long-term care programs, and some public facing essential workers, non-frontline essential healthcare personnel, and uh, faculty and staff and residents in congregate living settings. On March 1st, the city of Sheboygan made a decision to proceed with the planning for a 4th of July celebration called Freedom Fest in 2021. This will include Venetian Night Parade, Freedom Run, 4th of July Parade, afternoon entertainment, and fireworks. Uh, because the 4th of July falls on a Sunday in 2021, all Freedom Fest activities will be held on uh, Saturday, July 3rd of 2021. This decision was based on the downward trajectory in the COVID-19 pandemic locally. We need to continue this downward trajectory and get everyone vaccinated. Now, if there would be a spike uh, in new COVID take cases and a serious increase of COVID-19 in Sheboygan, this decision to hold the event could change. So I urge everyone to continue to mask up, wash your hands often, and please keep on practicing these prevented measures. And when you're eligible, please make an appointment to receive your vaccine. Thank you very much. Next, we'll move on to hearings. Um, item 2.1 is, is hearing number six of 2021 pursuant to a notice published in the personal notices by the city clerk. This is a hearing to amend the city of Sheboygan's official zoning map and to change the use district classification of a, proper, a property located at the northwest corner of South 10th Street in Illinois, formerly 935 Illinois Avenue, parcel 59281505800, and property located at uh, uh, off of South 12th, South 10th Street rather, formerly 1011 South 10th Street, parcel number 59281. 505810 and property located off of South 10th Street, formerly uh, 1015 South 10th Street, parcel 59281505820 and property located off of South 10th Street, parcel 59281505930 from class urban industrial to class commercial is there anyone who wishes to be heard? Is there anyone who wishes to be heard? Is there anyone who wishes to be heard? Chad, Chad. Chad, please go ahead. There you go. 
Thank you, Mayor. So I just want to state that these are all parcels that are owned either by the Redevelopment Authority uh, or the City of Sheboygan and in anticipation of future development in the area that's been identified as in an innovation district or some other use. It uh, made sense at this time to move forward with rezoning because we know that it's not going to be an industrial use. So the central commercial use is the most, um, the, the, the has the most options for redevelopment to occur. So it's the most flexible zoning for that area. And you'll recall about three years ago, we the rezone of the Badger State lost for the affordable housing development. Um, that was zoned central commercial as well. So the, the plan is to get this ready for future redevelopment. Thank you very much for that information. All the person Sorensen. Thank you, Mayor. I move to close the hearing. Thank you for that motion and support. All those in favor of closing the hearing, please signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Aye. Opposed? Motion passes to close the hearing. Next, we'll go on with uh, the second hearing, item 2.5. Uh, it's hearing number 10 of 2021 pursuant to a notice published and the personal notices uh, sent by the interim finance director. This is a hearing to confirm the exercise of police power in making an assessment for those benefited properties against which assessments are proposed for parking assessment districts number one, two, four, and five. Is there anyone wishing to be heard? Is there anyone wishing to be heard? Is there anyone wishing to be heard? Alderperson Sorensen. Thank you, Mayor. I move to close the hearing. Thank you for that motion and support. All those in favor of closing the hearings, please uh, signify by voting aye. 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 Opposed? Motion passes. That hearing is closed. Next, we'll move on to item uh, 2.6, which is uh, rather, excuse me, the consent agenda. The consent agenda will include items 3.2 through 3.15. Alderperson Sorensen. Thank you, Mayor. I move to receive and file all ROs, receive all RCs, and adopt all resolutions and ordinances. Thank you for that motion and support. Those items are before you. Is there any discussion? Mayor Finn. Chief Green. Mr. Mayor. There you go, Mary Lynn. I think that sounded like Bert's voice. Yes. Roberta asked something. Yes, it was me. Roberta. Roberta, please go proceed. Yes, thank you very much. Um, I just like to point out that item 3.3 um, and several after are um, in support of our downtown restaurants who are wanting to maintain outdoor eating areas as the summer begins. And I am all in favor of that. And I think it was a great city business relationship and I'm all in favor of it. Thank you. Thank you for those comments. Is Mayor, there a, go ahead, Mary. If Lynn. I could just uh, second what uh, Alder Felicki Paneski uh, stated and hope that we can carry that forward into the coming summer, uh, even though we are on a downward swing, which will hopefully continue. Um, I think uh, a close examination of our current business practices as relates to uh, our restaurants would uh, certainly be in order and uh, something I think we can take a look at. Thank you for those comments. Is there any other discussion? All those in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 I think the consent has to be a roll. I'm sorry, we're going to have to take a roll call on consent. If you would please enter your votes. Ten eyes. Motion passes. 
Under reports of officers, item 4.1 is RO number 165 of 2021 by the Director of Planning and Development submitting the 2021 Golden Shovel Certification for South Point Enterprise Campus through New North. Alderperson Sorensen. Thank you for that motion and support under discussion. Seeing no discussion, all those in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Motion passes. Item 4.2 is RO number 166 of 2021 by the Director of Planning and Development submitting communication from the United States Department of Housing and Urban Development regarding the approval of a recent application for Section 108 a loan guarantee pursuant to Resolution Number 105 of 2021 in the amount of $3.2 million for the Senior Community Center at 1817 North A Street. Alderperson Sorensen. Thank you for that motion and support. Is there any discussion on that item? Chad? Thank you, Mayor. So I just want to um, give the a little Cliff Notes version. So in the resolution, there's a number of items um, that conditions that are part of this approval that uh, city staff has looked at and we don't believe will be any issues with this financing. This will be paid back. This 3.2 million does not go against the city's general obligation borrowing capacity. Um, it's a loan with an interest rate of 0.3%. Uh, and it'll be paid back over 20 years with an estimated payment of $160,000 per year. Um, and we will start making those payments in 2020 and 2021 as part of our yearly and entitlement allocation. So the plan is to dedicate 2.7 million towards renovation of the uh, former Save-A-Lot into the Senior Community Center and reimburse the city 500,000 towards the purchase price that we did earlier this year of that real estate. Chad, what was that interest rate again? 0.035%. Thank you very much. Alderperson Sorensen, did you have a comment? Oh, no, I just... Very no. good. Alderperson Donahue. Uh, and uh, Chad, thank you for that financial update because I, it is a kind of a complicated <clears throat> financing scheme. I just want to speak to the fact that this is a huge home run for the city um, to take a fairly derelict um, uh, structure in a neighborhood that can certainly use some love and care and to place a senior center right in the middle of that near Habitat for Humanity with a lot of good parking. Uh, Meredith, you gotta be thinking polling place. No, I'm just kidding. Um, and, uh, but when we look at revitalizing neighborhoods, placing a, a community center like this right in the middle of it is just critical and I just am really looking forward to it uh, because I think it's gonna be a great addition. And I think it's also an opportunity for the Senior Center, uh, which is under excellent new leadership, um, to engage in really interesting and thoughtful ways to use that huge building. And uh, so I think it is a win, 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 win. And I'm just so happy this worked out. So Chad, thank you. Thank and you everybody for, else that's involved. Thank you for those comments. Roberta? I have a comment. Um, I would just like to add one little other thing. It is directly on a bus route. The bus is stopped right smack in front of it. So that's another win. Any other online comments? Mayor, Alderman Boren. Please proceed. Thank you, Mayor. Uh, I guess this would be for Todd. Uh, Todd, where are we in the planning process with this as far as laying out the floor plan and that type of thing? Uh, thank you, Jim. Uh, we're still in the layout um, uh, process of it. We basically have been working with the architects in developing a multi-phase uh, program, as I've stated in the past, and we're working on uh, the budget as far as getting budgets for, for the first phase. Uh, originally, just to update everybody, we were looking at the um, 
the gym as being the focal point. So it'd be the, the front lobby into the gym. And we've changed that. So now it's going to actually be um, a focus and the lobby, the entry area, the office space, and the multi-use rooms that will give the um, senior center much more um, ability for flexibility with, with the seniors in programming. So that'll be the first phase. And then there's the um, replacement of the roof and the uh, HVAC portions of it to designate those accordingly. And then there's going to be a proposed um, area for lease for an additional business uh, to help share in overhead costs. And then we're also looking at a facade upgrade, which will actually help beautify the, the neighborhood and bring it up and revitalize it, as well as cleaning up the parking lot. Thank you. Are there any other comments? Chad? Just as a follow-up to the, what the city administrator said, uh, the plan is to be out to bid hopefully in summer, so sometime in July, um, get under contract in September, uh, renovate over the winter season next year and open sometime in the second quarter of 2022. Thank you for that schedule. Any other comments? Thank you. Seeing none then, all those in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Motion passes. Item uh, 4.3 is RO number 167 of 2021 by the Director of Planning and Development submitting for Common Council information a progress report on the allocation of CDBG, CV1, and 3 funds as provided by the U.S. Department of Housing and Urban Development. Alderperson Sorensen. Thank you, Mayor. I move to receive and file the document. Thank you for that motion and support. Oh, that. Ask Chad to explain. Thank you, Mayor. So in the document, you'll see that there is a number of um, loan funds under the Small Business Emergency Assistance Program that have been uh, given out primarily in 2021. Um, to date, we have given um, around 335,000 has been loaned. We dedicated 420,000 towards this, so we have a balance of about 85,000. Um, we also, in the first round of COVID, issued some um, funding to area nonprofits to help with some of their operational losses. And then um, we, as you know, CV3, uh, CDBG CV3 was allocated later at 230000 We gave um, that entire amount, 230211 to Lakeshore Cap to administer the uh, mortgage assistance program on behalf of the city. Uh, 204,000 of those funds will be direct allocation to residents. Uh, the rest of that difference will be um, management and administration costs. The CV2, so there was three allocations. Two of the CV1 and CV3 funds came to the city. CV2 funds came to the State Department of Administration. Uh, we were notified that we would receive 229,000 um, out of that um, pool, so we have been working with the state to try to get to a, an agreeable uh, project. It looks like it's going to go to a number of uh, additional nonprofits that have implemented new programs as it relates to COVID and help with some of those costs as it relates to PP and e, PPE and, and the new programs. So we're hoping to get that under contract in the coming weeks and be able to distribute those funds accordingly. Thank you very much for that report. Alderperson Donahue, is your light on? Um, and again, I just, there's so much good news for <laughs> the community to, you know, in this agenda uh, that is really pretty heartwarming. I'm really so pleased to see that a good chunk of the um, uh, emergency assistance, assistance fund has been uh, already expended. Um, when I am starting to go out and about now, I, I say, hey, have you applied for that money? And I'm hoping all of uh, alders are doing that. Uh, and there's still uh, quite a bit left, but we can't emphasize enough how these are just absolute, you know, it's like a blood transfusion. It's just critical for survival, and so I'm really happy to see it. And I'm hoping um, and looking forward to the details on the rental assistance money that should be coming to the city uh, at some point, uh, hopefully in the fairly uh, 
uh, near future because that is an enormous issue in our community. Thanks. Thank you for those comments. Any, anyone else? <clears throat> Mayor? Please go ahead, Mayor. Um, Chad, as far as the HUD amount that we've given out already this year, <laughs> is that in line with the usual per year or are we ahead of schedule that um, this seems to be progressed? <clears throat> Well, we get around 917000 a year, 920000 of uh, normal entitlement allocation. This roughly million dollars was on top of that 900000 So um, we've given out our typical allocation to public service agencies that are doing great things in our community. Um, and then this was on top of it as it related to COVID. So um, a number of nonprofits have gotten funding from the city uh, to deal with COVID-related expenses. Thank you. Any other discussion? See none. All the, those in favor of the uh, motion, please signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Motion passes. Item 4.4 will be referred to the uh, both uh, the dual referral to licensing hearings and public safety and the Public Works Committee. Resolutions, uh, items 5.1 through 5.3 will be referred to various committees. And under reports of committees, item 6.1 is RC number uh, 298, 289 rather of 2021 by the Finance and Personnel Committee. To whom was referred resolution number 180 of 2021 by Alder Persons Donahue and Bourne authorizing the budget adjustment and appropriation uh, in the 2021 budget regarding the Mead Public Library. Alder Person Donahue. I have moved to receive the report of the committees and adopt the resolution. Second. Thank you for that motion and support. Is there any discussion on the motion? Seeing none, would the clerk please call the roll for passage? Ten eyes. Motion passes. Item 6.2 is RC number 290 of 2021 by the Finance and Personnel Committee to whom was referred resolution number 183 of 2021 by all the persons Donahue and Bourne awarding the sale of 5,140,000 in general obligation promissory notes series 2021A. Alder person Donahue. Thank you, Mayor. I uh, move to uh, approve the uh, resolution and award the uh, uh, sale of bonds as outlined. Second. I'm sorry, that, that, uh, promissory notes, not bonds. Thank you very much for that uh, motion and support. That's before us for discussion. Carol Worth, are you online with us? Do you want us to make the amendments? Pardon me? Yeah, you should make the motion to amend. Okay, Mayor. Please go ahead. I move to amend res the resolution to decrease the amount of bonds to be issued from five million one hundred forty thousand to five million one hundred twenty-five thousand, which includes updating the amounts identified in the resolution title section one A and section two, and to incorporate the exhibits provided by Wisconsin Public Finance Professionals based on the bids received today. Second. Second. Thank you for that amendment. Is there any discussion on the amendment? Seeing none, all those in favor of the amendment as presented, please signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? The amendment passes. So now we're discussing the main motion as amended. Is there any further discussion on the main motion? Uh, Mayor? Please go ahead. Uh, thank you, Mayor. Uh, I was wondering if Carol could give us a result of the, uh, of the sale, who is the winning bidder, and what was the interest rate, please? Carol, are you online with us? 
then in that case, we'll turn it over to our administrator. Oh, she's here. Please, please proceed and answer the question, sure. Carol. <laughs> yes. Okay. The, <laughs> for the uh, promissory notes received six bids today, and the winning bidder was submitted by the firm of Robert W. Baird out of Milwaukee, and the true interest rate is 1.109%. So the notes obviously are funding the capital improvement uh, projects for the city and for uh, two of the city's PID districts. Thank you for that information, Carol. Is there any other discussion or questions? Just a question for Carol, this is Alderman Warren. <coughs> Carol, how is this uh, sale compared to some of the other ones you've had in the last week or 10 days? Uh, that's a, a great question because we've had uh, we've seen a lot of uh, changes in the market in the last couple of weeks. Um, interest rates actually rose about uh, 40 basis points since the beginning of March. Uh, when I presented to you back in um, uh, beginning of February, we were projecting a 0 0.92. So as you can see, um, we uh, we are higher, but not as high as the, what the market has moved. And when I look at uh, other sales, uh, for example, uh, the, another, a very good comparable sale was um, uh, the city of um, Onalaska, which is also uh, AA2. And, uh, uh, and they came in uh, closer to uh, uh, the 1.5% uh, range. So uh, Sheboygan did very well. Thank you, Carol. Mm -hmm. Thank you very much for the, that discussion. Is there any other discussion? Seeing none, will the clerk please call the roll for passage? Ten eyes. Motion passes. Item 6.3 is RC number 291 of 2021 by the Finance and Personnel Committee. Tim was referred resolution number 184 of 2021 by Alder Persons Donahue and Bourne, awarding the sale of $3,660,000 in taxable general obligation refunding bonds, series 2021B. Alder Person Donahue. I move to adopt the resolution. Second. Thank you for that motion and support. Is there any discussion? Mayor. Go ahead, our Alderperson Sorensen. I move to amend resolution, the resolution to decrease the amount of bonds to be issued from 300, excuse me, 366,000, excuse me, 3,666,000 to 3,600,000, which includes updating the amount identified in the resolution title section A1 and section 2 and to incorporate the exhibits provided by the Wisconsin Public Finance Professional based on the bids received today. Second. Thank you for the, the, that amendment and a second. That amendment is before us for discussion. Is there any discussion on the amendment? Seeing none, all those in favor of the amendment, please signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Well, the amendment passes. Now we're on the main motion as amended. Is there any further discussion? I have a question, Mr. Mayor. Please proceed. Um, when I reviewed the document, there was a blank page in mine, and I'm very leery of blank pages in contracts. <laughs> so Chuck, if you could check it out. It was page five, I think or what would have been page five. Okay. We did review it. I'm, I'm not sure why you had a blank page, but we did review the documents and uh, the document is complete. There are no, there are no blank pages in yours. I did not see any. Great, thank you. <laughs> Carol, would you like to give us uh, an update on this one as well? Carol, are you on mute? She, I don't, she's not online anymore. Scott, is she still online? She's, she's not, no, she's, on, but she does, her screen has disappeared. Looks like you had Carol's 
Otherwise, I can do it. I think it's like 1.9 percent. Administrator Wolf, please please proceed with the update. Thank you, Mayor. Um, for the uh, three million six hundred thousand taxable general obligation refunding bonds, uh, they had uh, they had six bidders again. And the winner was Northland Securities Inc. out of Minneapolis, Minnesota. And the true interest rate was 1.92, which is still really good considering uh, the fluctuations in the market recently. Um, one thing that I did want to point out um, that I was hoping Carol would touch on is that the city did maintain its AA2 rating and that Moody's actually did reference the fact that they were they liked the balancing that the city of Sheboygan did with its debt payments and how we were strategic in looking at not just this year, but the years to come. So that was something that they identified during their uh, review. Thank you. Thank you for that report. Is there any other discussion on the motion? This is Alderperson Feliki Paneski. I would just like to say thank you because that balancing was very thoughtful and very well planned, planned out. So congrats to finance city administrator. Uh, we got it right. And I would also point out that we have lowered, lowered the dollar amounts for both of these um, refinancing and the, the bonding, um, which is a good thing. We just quote saved money by not needing to spend that money. Thank you. Thank you for those comments. Any other discussion? Hearing none, will the clerk please call the roll for passage? Ten eyes. Motion passes. Moving on to item 6.4, RC number 292 of 2021 by the Finance and Personnel Committee, to whom was referred General Ordinance number 38 of 2021 by all the persons Donahue and Bourne, temporarily providing for the change of various due dates related to parking assessments in the city of Sheboygan. Alderperson Donahue. I move to receive the uh, report of the committee and adopt the ordinance. Second. Thank you for that motion and support. Is there any discussion on this item? Chad? I just want to mention that this document is coming before you to change a payment due date for the businesses that are affected by uh, the parking assessments. Typically, parking assessment uh, payments are due on May 1st. This will extend it out to June 1st, giving the businesses an additional 30 days with the idea that hopefully um, as the pandemic becomes less, that people will uh, start participating in local businesses and give them the revenues in order to make the payments. Um, we did do this, the council approved a similar thing in 2020. Um, the majority of the businesses, however, did pay on time, uh, but we just feel it's a good gesture given that we're just coming out of the pandemic um, to give them a little bit more time to make payment. Thank you for those comments. Anyone else need have a question or discussion? Mike? Alderperson Wolf? Yeah, I just wanted to touch base and uh, reiterate what, uh, um, what Chad mentioned. It's basically we're, we're doing the same thing as 2020, trying to show that um, a better relationship between the businesses and the city and giving some relief if relief is needed. As Chad had stated, um, the majority of them did, did pay according to the, the standard, but this does give some relief to those that need it. Thank you for that comment. There's no other discussion. I'd ask the clerk to call the roll for passage. Nice. Motion passes. 
Item 6.5 is RC number 293 of 2021 by the Public Works Committee. To was referred General Ordinance number 39 of 2021 by Alder Persons, Decker and Sorensen, amending section 110 through 210 of the Sheboygan Municipal Code relating to assessments of costs for sidewalks and recommends um, to amend the ordinance to provide limitation of 75 square feet of sidewalk per parcel per side adjacent to the public right of way uh, per year. Alderperson Decker. Thank you, Mayor. I make a motion to receive the report of the committee and adopt the substitute ordinance. Second. Thank you for that motion and support. Is there any discussion on this item? Uh, Mayor Alderman Boren. Go ahead, Jim. Uh, could I have Director Beeble explain this a little bit? Somehow I overlooked this when I was preparing for the meeting, so I have a little better understanding of it. Director Beeble, can you handle that? Uh, yes, I yes I am. Um, thanks, thanks, Alderman Boren. What, what this uh, ordinance does is um, basically provides relief to the citizens or residents for. Um, if we have a tree that has lifted a sidewalk, the old ordinance was the city would pick up 40% of the cost of the squares lifted adjacent to a tree, and the property owner was still responsible for 60% of that cost. With with em emerald ash borer and the removal of several, you know, thousands of trees now, we're in starting the phase of starting to replant and reforest our urban forest within the city. And uh, it's it's become somewhat contentious, especially with uh, some of the residents because they've had to pay for sidewalk repairs, not just once, but sometimes more than once as a result of, of trees lifting the sidewalk panels. So one of the one of the one of the things that we we when we're going around with the sidewalk replacement program and the tree planting program to encourage trees is to have the ability to say, you know, moving forward, the city will pick up any any tree, any sidewalk slab immediately adjacent to the tree that would be lifted up to a maximum of 75 square feet. And that's roughly three <coughs> sidewalk panels. Okay. Now, what, we're, we're anticipating, however, that this burden should be reduced because as we reforest and replant trees, we, our city forester has identified the proper trees for the, for the particular terrace space, um, where maybe in the past, I, I would say, is that that wasn't the case. And uh, we probably had the wrong species of trees in some of our terraces, too large, for instance, for too small of an area, and we had um, and root, root damage to the sidewalk. So moving forward, as I said, we would plant the proper tree in, in the proper location to minimize this, but yet there still would be relief to those residents if and when uh, that would occur into the future. Thank you very much for that explanation. Are there, is there any other discussion or questions? Seeing none, I'd ask the clerk to call the roll. Ten eyes. Motion passes. Under, um, let's see. Under general ordinances, item 7.1 and 7.2 will be referred to various committees. Under matters laid over, item 8.1 is RO number 152 of 2021 by the Director of Planning and, Deve and Sustainability mm -hmm. Coordinator, Chad Palachek, submitting the 2020 Green Tier Legacy Communities Annual Report outlining the City of Sheboygan's 2020 sustainable accomplishments and reporting that the document will be submitted to the Wisconsin Department of Natural Resources. Alderperson Sorensen. Thank you, Mayor. Move to accept the report. Thank you for that motion and support. Is there any discussion on the motion? Seeing none, will the clerk please call the roll for passage? <coughs> <clears throat> 
Oh, nice. Motion passes. The next uh, couple items we're going to combine. So item 8.234 and 5. Uh, RO number 153, 154, 155, and 156 of 2021 by the City of Sheboygan Planning Commission to was referred General Ordinance number 32 of 2021 by Alderperson Donahue. Uh, and all, let's go back to uh, Ordinance number 33, 34, and 35 by Alderperson Donahue and RO number 139, 140, 141, and 142 by the city clerk, amending the city of uh, Sheboygan's uh, official zoning map of the city of Sheboygan zoning ordinance to change the use district classification of property located at the northwest corner of South 10th Street and Illinois Avenue, formerly 935 Illinois Avenue, parcel 5928-150, Five eight zero zero, and property located off of South 10th Street, formerly 1011 South 10th Street, parcel 59281505810, and parcel and property located off of South 10th Street, formerly 1015 South 10th Street, parcel 59281505820. And property located off of South 10th Street, parcel 59281505930, from class urban industrial to class commercial, uh, central commercial, and wishes to report that this matter was discussed at a regular meeting of the City Planning Commission on February 23rd, and after due consideration, recommends adopting the general ordinance and filing the ROs. Alderperson Bourne. Thank you, Mayor. Uh, make a motion to adopt the general ordinance and file the RO. And that's all or, four or, ordinances and five and four or ROs. Is there any discussion on the motion? Seeing none, will the clerk please call the roll for passage? Nice. Motion passes. Uh, next is other matters authorized by law. I'll turn it over to City Attorney Adams. Ten point one is an RO by the City Clerk submitting various license applications for the period ending June 30th, 2021, December 31st, 2021, April 14th, 2022, and June 30th, 2022. That'll be referred to licensing hearings and public safety committee. 9.2 is a resolution by all the persons Decker and Sorensen authorizing the appropriate city officials to enter into an engineering service agreement with Erickson Engineering Company, LLC, regarding the design of the trail bridge at Evergreen Park crossing the Pigeon River. That'll be referred to the Public Works Committee. Next is uh, adjournment. All the persons. Mayor. Sorensen. Mayor. Yeah. Yes. Uh, I have a, just have a question. Is our next meeting the day after the election? Yes, that's correct. We'll be meeting on a Tuesday. On a Wednesday. On a Wednesday, excuse me. Alderperson Sorensen. Thank you, Mayor. I move to adjourn. Thank you for that motion and support. All those in favor of adjournment, please signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? We stand adjourned. Thank you for your time this evening.